Well, uh, my name is Parker Moore. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Tux on Trucks, and it's exciting to get out and pitch. Uh, this is the, kind of the kickoff of our pitching season, as, uh, as you can imagine, our springtime and tuxedo world is a little crazy right now, a little crazy, and we'll dive into what Tux on Trucks is here for the next uh, four minutes and 46 seconds. So Tux on Trucks is exactly what it sounds like. We're a mobile tuxedo rental service, primarily catering to the college, high school, and of course, some wedding uh, markets. And our touch point with our customers in each of these demographics and different segments of our market look a little different. And all of them make us uh, quite unique. So let's start with the high school uh, side. So for a high school, we'll actually partner with these schools across the state of South Carolina, which we're located today. And uh, we're actually going to go into the school. We're going to set up where they want us, whether that's the cafeteria, Miss Smith's classroom, wherever. And, uh, and we're actually going to offer a free fitting day for any guy who thinks they're going to prom. Right? They've got to find a date first, I find. Uh, but once they get that date, they'll go to prom. Fitting is free. They come by and get fitted. It takes all of maybe 30 seconds. And then they go home. And they order online with mom and dad. Uh, the week leading up to prom, all the way up to almost uh, two days ahead of prom. We can actually do a, a two-day turnaround order time frame. Uh, the week of prom, we're back on the school's campus. If it's a large enough order, we'll actually deliver them all right there back to the high school, or we'll just drop ship it to their front door, whichever the customer selects at checkout. Uh, so that's what we've been doing in the high school world. College market, a whole lot easier. I love the college guys. They got the credit card in their back pocket, and they're ready to swipe it. Uh, college guys rent from us three or four times a spring, You'd think they think they should just buy a tux at that point, but we don't tell them that. Um, so uh, the college guys is really great. We're about six uh, college campuses across the southeast today, our furthest one being Auburn University. I should mention we're in about 55 high schools across uh, South Carolina at this time. And then weddings, uh, there's Jonathan. He's actually our, my business partner. That was his wedding. He got a pretty good deal in those tuxedos for his wedding. Uh, but that's him and uh, his beautiful bride, Maria, there. Um, but we do uh, some weddings now as well. We've just started really tapping the wedding market in the Charlotte area, and we're in our fifth, we have our fifth wedding coming up of the season this weekend. So that's kind of how we operate at uh, various different, uh, I should mention, weddings is obviously a case-by-case -case basis for fitting, right? Sometimes we'll go to the bachelor party, we're fitting them at a bowling alley, literally. Uh, sometimes it's at a guy's house or wherever. So uh, that's kind of how we uh, operate in those three different markets there for Tux on Trucks. Now, Tux on Trucks, like most uh, startups, had very humble beginnings. I actually had this idea in high school, in Clover High School, just down the state line there in South Carolina. Pitched this at a, comp a competition at the University of South Carolina. We ended up winning the competition, couldn't believe it. And uh, this kind of sparked a little prototype, really rough logo concept, my senior year of college. We actually had customers before we had suppliers. And I had schools and uh, superintendents and principals calling us. They found us on the local news. We had local news coverage spanning a five-state area. It really took off faster than we thought. So um, since then, we've been able to uh, hire about five area managers. You'll see their faces there. And they've been able to operate Tux on Trucks almost as, as, uh, like a mini franchise level in their respective territory. Uh, this is especially crucial, we find, for our college market as well. So we've been really blessed with some of the press coverage we've seen uh, and the University of South Carolina supporting us along the way as well. Something we're really excited about this season, we've actually launched, uh, gosh, I guess that was February of this year, is our self-fitting algorithm tool. This is extremely exciting for us. We're actually able to take a customer now who finds us online, and maybe they're located in Florida. We don't actually have to physically be there to measure him. right? So now they can go on our website, they enter the sizes that they know, height, weight, shoe size, if they know their waist size or whatever, there's options to fill that in. But really, they can just get by with height, weight, shoe size, and um, and maybe, uh, maybe their pants, like jeans, waist size. Uh, and we're able to get really accurate measurements from that, like scary accurate. So then we're able to drop ship these tuxedos across the country, which makes us a little bit more flexible in how we actually collect our customers' data uh, for that sizing. So that's really uh, crucial. We've seen great success from that. That is new for us this season. We're in our fourth year, by the way, of, of doing this. Um, one of the most exciting and crucial partnerships we just found, also new this year, is with Jostens. Everybody heard of Jostens, the class reading company? Yes. Uh, graduation gear. We want to be the Jostens of the tuxedo industry. In fact, I had a student actually mistake us to be Jostens. I almost gave him a hug. That's exactly what we want you to think. Jostens shows up. They pretty much own these high schools. They just walk in the door. They do their thing. They get out and the schools, and they have great partnerships with the schools. So a, as you might know, Jostens is a national company, but they have local franchise owners. The upstate South Carolina uh, franchise of Jostens has partnered with us this year, and they've done incredible work uh, on the ground market, marketing for us, getting home to mom and dad. That's the most difficult thing we find for the high school crowd, is reaching mom and dad at home. College guys, again, are easy. Weddings are their own little game. 
but reaching mom and dad at home, Jocelyn's has been a big crucial player for that. And this summer we're pitching for 200K as we uh, approach uh, the summertime here, and uh, that's going to be spent toward, of course, digital marketing, and we partner with um, iHeartMedia to kind of outroll that for us, okay? Wow, that was fast five minutes, but thanks for your time. I'm happy to take questions from, from you guys and, of course, the audience today. Thanks so much. Um, awesome company. Congratulations on the high growth. It looks like obviously you have some traction somewhere, which makes me think your inventory management must be a, a quite a lot of work. Can you tell us a bit about your back-end infrastructure, especially it can, with the franchise model? I'm interested in how you manage that. Yeah, fortunately, I actually don't touch a single tuxedo. Uh, we don't do alterations. We don't do cleaning. Uh, we have three, we actually have four national wholesale supplier accounts. And they handle all this stuff for us, including shipping. Um, so we're actually just sending them the orders as they come in, and they handle the rest. Um, so they had the inventory to be able to scale up to, um, gosh, I mean, we could be doing 20,000 orders a weekend, uh, which is a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and then the supplier that we, the newest supplier that we uh, kind of partnered with this season, really believes and sees the franchise goal that I mentioned. That's what we want, that's what we want to do is franchise this. We found early on that some suppliers have actually, um, we actually had to really you know, convince them to even open an account with us at all, uh, which I was shocked with at first, four years ago, because they're like, no, we're not gonna have an account with you. You don't have a store. So well, yeah, that's, that's the whole point. That's, that's what's good. And they're like, no, no, we want you to have a local brick and mortar shop. Like, Why? Yeah. And so um, they, didn't, they didn't allow us to be in multiple places at once, and our new supplier sees the vision and wants us to really kill it in a large geographic territory, pick up, sell a franchise in Florida, Texas, and everywhere. And they have the ability to, as far as inventory goes, to scale and grow with us as we, as we do that. So you never own, you don't own the tuxedos, you just are an interface. I don't own a tux team. myself. Or a truck, by the way, which is a little disingenuous, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's the thing I was you don't own trucks, you don't own trucks. <laughs> so uh, I will say, early on, our initial concept was to have this massive 18-wheeler, one of the low-riding like you know, NASCAR trailers that rolls up to the front door of the high school. Guys come in one side, exit the other. That was the that was the vision. Uh, you know, as soon as I find three million dollars to buy all that, I, I will do that. Um, but we found that FedEx is a great truck, and um, and UPS as well as well. So that's fun. <laughs> So is that true that you would do that if you had the money? I, you know, I think it would be kind of a sexy thing to, to have. Um, we don't need it. I've actually, um, both my parents are high school teachers, and so I kind of knew early on what a school district wants to hear in a, in a pitch to come into the school. And um, I was kind of shocked that they let us in the door. We right. thought that we would have to have, you know, have that truck, honestly, to operate. But they're literally putting us in the gym and the cafeteria. So we don't really need it could be a good wedding thing, right? Where it's sort of high end, you know, you come in to the NASCAR truck and sure. have fancy tuxes and watches and yeah, whatever yeah. else, you know, but anyway. So is it really a franchise model? That's These, where you want to go. Yeah, that's, that's so what we're trying to build out. Five or six people you show, those are not franchisees, those are employees. They, those are, yeah, those are contract employees who are operating in their own little territory. So like one of our guys is running Charleston. He runs the entire Charleston market by himself. Okay. And so we're trying to, Establish that kind of and so have you started building out the franchise model? I think a lot of that is like, you know, documentation of how to do this and what to do. And no, we, we really are just hoping to get started into that this summer during our off season. We have a, a board of advisors. Uh, one of those um, was the largest franchise owner of Dairy Queen in his heyday. And so he, um, he actually was the class professor I had that encouraged me to pitch this. So he's like, you have to do this as a franchise business. Right. So, um, he'll, he'll be a great uh, support for us. Okay, that. so then you know that. So what I would say is that that first company probably didn't want to work with you because if you own a storefront, I can say, okay, I'm giving you this territory. Yeah. And if someone else has a storefront, I'm giving them that territory. Exactly right. They don't know how much territory to give you. So that could end up being a problem with you with this company you are working with in terms of who you're competing with on, you know, who are their other partners you're competing with. Yeah. So the initial company is like Sam's Club for tuxedo wholesale. And they have mom and pop shops all over the country. And they were afraid we were going to go, like Clemson, for example. Right. They were afraid we were going to go in and hurt someone they've been doing business with for 30 years. Right, they're partners. I was like, well, yeah. you know, 
you know, some, I mean, I was like, we're going to be online, you know? Yeah. So if I have a guy who's running around doing stuff on campus and they end up getting orders, what am I supposed to do? Not go order through y'all? And so they're like, well, we, we don't want you there. So we found a supplier who's like, we don't care about the local mom and pop shop. We want you to grow. Right. But the, so the, the company could see that your growth and then either buy you or try to compete with you by going yeah. online. You know, the tire rack down here is this famous story about how this exactly happened. You know, we don't want to compete with our, our distributors, our distribution network, and now they're basically gone because they didn't compete. You know, the tire sellers went over the top and just started selling, you know, online. So you just need to be aware of where you are and make sure you've got a real business 10 years from now. Yeah. Something interesting we learned just two years ago, we actually tried to partner with a local mom and pop shop that had like five or six stores in Columbia, South Carolina, who were killing it in that, in that market. And we, our offer was for Tucks on Trucks to be the vehicle, pun intended, to carry their brand and put it in local high schools. And, and we thought that was a great pitch. And they're like, no, 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 that'll be detrimental to our business. I'm like, why? They want kids coming to their store because they don't really make money on tuxedo rentals. They make money on Southern Tide shirts they sell in the men's shop. And I thought, wow, I didn't really see that angle. Um, but fascinating to kind of learn from that business model, yeah. So just be aware of that. Yeah. Okay. And study Tire Rack, too. As Absolutely, that's the story. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, how many colleges did you say you had? We are in six colleges. Six. And then how many weddings have you done? To date, yeah. uh, you know, probably about 10. And then the revenue streams, how do you make money? Well, we're just a traditional retailer. So um, the wholesale the tuxedo will mark it up almost 100%. So are they actually ordering from you and then you wholesale that? Right. And then, gotcha, okay. We're actually just now starting to see uh, a different revenue stream kind of uh, opportunities come into play where because we're in these high schools and we have a lot of uh, customers really <coughs> staring at us. Prom is a huge industry, right? So you got limousine rentals, you got the florist, boutonnieres, whatever you wear at prom. And so we're trying to actually sell some space and say, hey, local florists, we can actually do something here where we're, we're sponsoring you guys with our tuxedo in such and such high school. Uh, so that's kind of a, another revenue stream. So I assume you have not had cash flow issues because your customers pay you yeah. and then you hoard. Early debt free, kind of operating like a lemonade stand. Uh, very, very simple books. That's a beautiful model. It's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> it's gorgeous and rare as we're learning. I didn't know how rare that kind of was. Mm -hmm. Do you have customer service problems? Because I figure a mom and pop store, you can go in and you can say, hey, this doesn't quite fit, or what do I do? We have customer education problems. We have people who think that you cannot, like, I get this question every day. What happens if it doesn't fit? Well, it's the same thing that would happen if you go to Men's Warehouse and it doesn't fit. You know, like, we're, we're going to fix it. Uh, we would just be able to ship it to your front door, uh, which is even easier, I find, for the customer, uh, well ahead of the event. Um, so uh, it's just, a, just kind of a change of mindset we're trying to get across to our customers. The college guys get it. The high school parents don't. I, I mean, I've got texts right now from a mom who's just freaking out. Her son's prom is like two weeks away. They've already ordered. I'm like, it, it's going to arrive in plenty of time. Y'all are way advanced on that. So it's a customer education problem uh, in some markets. So what do you do in that case? Do you just ship it back and then get it? Yeah, we can do, gosh, we can do a, uh, I mean, if you had a tux delivered to your house right now, so it, it could be a new jacket. It could be there by the end of day today. I say, you should ship my second jacket. Yeah. If the college market's so much easier than the high school market, why don't you just focus on college? Mm -hmm. That is the question of the springtime for us, yes. Um, we, yes. We want to do a little bit more focus as we uh, go into our off season and into next year, especially in the fall, to really uh, hammer down on the college markets. Um, that could really be some great revenue for us that can, uh, can help out. Some of the, the money that we're looking to raise this summer will certainly go toward growing the college scene because it is very low cost for us to just get on campus and operate. Extremely low cost. So tell me about the seasonality of the revenue and how you're trying to flatten that. Yeah. Um, you know, we found, and this is just kind of coming at us, uh, quinceañeras are big. What is? Quinceañeras. Like 15 year old. 15 uh, year old parties, parties um, where. Hey, everyone needs a tux. 
and those kind of happen throughout the year. If you really know about that, uh, we have um, corporate events and galas. We just uh, we just did the uh, corporate event for the Dollar Moore School Centennial Gala. Some of these things happen in the fall. So these are big bulk orders, 500 tuxedos at once kind of events that do happen in the fall and the summertime. And then we will have some weddings sprinkled in for later in the fall as well. So that keeps us a little. Just a quick question: in the corporate event, why would they go to you and not the wholesaler or some larger? You don't know. I mean, well, the one we've done. <laughs> I see. Personal connection. <laughs> <laughs> Lowe's. 